Welcome to The Cynical Developer, the podcast that helps you to improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology and providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. So straight off the bat, I'm not going to be telling you how to get out of the office and work on a beach somewhere. But what we will be discussing today is working remotely. I wanted to address some of the awesome things that uh, are about working remotely and working from home, but also some of the challenges that it uh, brings up that are often overlooked. These points that I'm going to address are going to be the benefits, so less travelling and uh, a lot of relief from commuting, saving money, so technically it's a bit of a pay rise, Quiet when you need it, freedom to work from wherever you want, a wider pool of jobs, the problems that remote working produces, which is knowing how much to do and not slacking off, the lack of human contact and looking at the same boring four walls, and problem solving gets harder. Now, remote working is becoming more and more common. It's still not standard for jobs in the UK, but I've held several positions with remote possibilities. Uh, That doesn't quite sound right, with possibilities of working remote. But it's not all as glorious as it may seem. It takes a special kind of person with some special dedication to succeed and be productive as a remote worker. And I'm going to talk about some of these challenges today. But first, let's get into the good things that uh, remote working gives. So the benefits, less travel and relief from commuting. And we all hate that, don't we? The, the commute. So working remotely and working from home, you don't spend hours and hours each day traveling to and from the office, which is great because you aren't stuck in traffic um, or waiting for trains that have been delayed and cancelled and getting on the wrong train and ended up at the wrong end of the country like uh, I've done that before. Um, <laughs> you get a little longer in bed uh, and when your day is over, your day's over, you're already at home, you can start relaxing straight away, enjoying your evening. There's no uh, fighting to uh, to get on that train or looking for a taxi or walking in the rain to your car and, and all that uh, horrible stuff. It's, uh, it's really good. And uh, I've got a, a young family, so I'm working remotely at the moment. As soon as I'm finished, I get to spend time with them, which when I was working in the office, I was only getting to see them for 45 minutes an hour at most, most evenings. So you're saving money as well. And it's technically, it's a bit of a pay rise. As you aren't paying for train tickets, you're not paying for car parking, you're not paying for fuel, you're not paying for the wear and tear on your car. And even eating is cheaper because you tend to just eat what you've got in the house rather than going out to the local cafe or the local shop and spending loads of money on what's really rubbish food. You've often got stuff in that you can quickly whip up into a meal. So you spent a lot of money doing that. Now, I was spending probably £10 at least a day at the uh, local shop, whereas now I probably need to spend a couple of pounds here and there, um, and that's if uh, we haven't got something in the house to, to eat already. Getting quiet time when you need it in an open plan office can be hard, um, but working from home, it's a lot easier. So the office it is very distracting, especially if you're working for a company that... Uh, They have open plan uh, office spaces. And uh, if you mix with the likes of custom services and other departments, all in that single office space, it can be hard to get into flow because you just can't concentrate because there's phones going, there's people shouting and screaming and running around and and basically uh, making a nuisance of themselves. And uh, I've worked a couple of places where they operate a no headphones policy. So that's made it a lot harder to, uh, to ignore the noise and uh, and what's going on around you and, and focus on and what you're doing. Whereas working from home in your own little space, you can have your music on or you can put headphones on and just completely zone out, get in the flow and get on with what you're uh, meant to be getting on with. Remote working also offers you freedom of where you can work from. And it's often called, and I've already referred to it as working from home, but you don't really need to work from home. Or at least you don't need to work from your home. You could work from a friend's house or a family member's house. Um, if you're away, maybe you, you've gone to visit family in a different part of the country, but you still need to, to work your nine-to-five job. Then you can do that. 
But you can go to other places as well, coffee shops, libraries, maybe even a bar if, you, if you're that way inclined. This kind of freedom is amazing. Um, and not being tied into a single working space is brilliant because I might get up in the morning and think, do you know what? I need to get out. I need to get away from these four walls. I'm going to go to the local Starbucks or other uh, local coffee shop and, and spend some time there. Just uh, getting away from everything. It's uh, a change of, of scene can help you uh, quite a lot. A wider pool of jobs is also available um, when you're looking at remote positions. There are fewer positions at the moment in the UK that are remote, but those ones that are, if you're working remotely, you can work anywhere in the country. So when you're commuting for work, if you're unable to relocate, you're completely ring-fenced by where you can find work. Now for me, I would commute for up to four hours a day uh, based on driving. Uh, that's two hours to the office and two hours home again. And it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot of commuting. And in a recent position I had, I was up at 5 a.m. Uh, to get into the office for 7.30 a.m. I'd then finally get home around 7 o'clock in the evening, so 7 p.m. That's a long day, and I was getting the train for my commute at that job. But if I drove in on, say, on a Friday, I could leave my house at 6.45, and I could be in the office for 7.30 without a problem. The issue came when it was time to come home. The longest it took me to drive home was a little over four hours, and that's not what you want to be doing on a Friday, no matter who you are or what, what you're doing. So it's a lot of commuting and it takes its toll on you eventually. Uh, this is where working from home or working remotely is really, really good. It's amazing. I've worked in remote positions for companies hundreds of miles from my home. And I take a trip into the office once or twice a month. And that, that was fantastic. You know, not being in the car all that time and not being stuck on a train is great. But being open to working remotely took my catchment area for a job from the limited circle that I had to nationwide because I wasn't able to relocate. So it's definitely something that you should look at if you haven't really thought about it before. A word of warning though, if you are just starting out in your career as a developer, remote working probably isn't the best option for you because you really need to be around your team and, and those more advanced developers who can teach you the ropes. Even I try to spend as much time in the office as I can uh, with, with the people on the team when I first start a new role, at least until I uh, have got an understanding or enough understanding of the system to actually get on and, and get things done. So that's some of the nice things with remote working. But let's cover the beasts inside the closet that most remote workers won't tell you about, and that's the problems. Knowing how much to do and not slacking off. Are working harder because you think your boss thinks you're slacking off is a real problem. And finding that balance between doing enough and doing too much is hard. In an earlier episode, we talked about the Pomodoro method and technique. If you practice this in the office and at home, then you truly will be working hard enough. If you're working for those 25 minute slots, you're going to be doing what you need to do. And it's a good uh, a good thing to get into, so you you know that you're you're doing what you need to do. Switching off is also harder when you work from home, because there's less distinction between your work and your personal space. I work, record the podcast, build my side projects, and hide from the family in my uh, home office. It's taken me a little while to find a balance between what's work time and what's personal time especially with me being so busy. Now, you can find yourself also a complete opposite to ends of this as well and actually just slacking off. And it's easy to slack off and get away with it to a point. You will eventually get caught because you're not delivering on uh, time and, uh, and things aren't getting done. But it is a problem for all of us, so you need a lot of self-discipline uh, for everything from getting up and to, uh, to being focused on work every day for the hours that you're being paid for. And also, as we mentioned, not overworking. It is a very, very hard balance. And when you're at home, it takes a great deal of self-discipline and motivation to keep on task. One method 
which has worked for me in the past, is to get into the mindset that during your set hours while at home, you'll not be available to your family. You don't talk to them when they walk past the office uh, and you keep your office door shut. Now, I've mentioned that I've got a young family and kids will learn to understand these rules that I've just um, just mentioned. I've got twins um, and at the recording time of this, they're just coming up to two years old. Now, if I leave my office door open, they toddle over and close it if I'm sat in here and because uh, they know that when I'm in here, I'm working and they're not to disturb me. So it works out pretty good for uh, recording the podcast too, as they know. When I'm in here, Dad's working. Don't bang on the door, don't shout and scream and leave him alone. The wife, on the other hand, that's a different kettle of fish. She still doesn't quite get it. And that uh, can be a bit of a pain, walking into the uh, the office space and uh, knocking on the door and disturbing my flow. But I'm sure we'll get there eventually. Lack of human contact and the same four walls are a real problem as well. Working all day without direct access to your colleagues, it can be isolating and pretty lonely. And it does take its toll. So you will need some other human interaction, no matter what your personality type is, whether you're extroverted or introverted, you do need some sort of uh, interaction with people. If, like me, you use the box room as your home office, being confined to that small space for at least eight hours a day, five days a week, can drive you mad. So getting out and working from other places or having a few days a week in the office will help. I found that I try and find more time for friends and family when I'm working remotely. This helps with combating loneliness and it has other benefits as well because your friends stop moaning that all you do is work and that you never have time to see them anymore. So it's hard for me now with the kids to find time to get out and see them, but I do uh, make the time when I can and uh, I make more of an effort when I'm working remotely to do this. I've also started taking some time once or twice a week to do something that isn't IT related or at least doesn't have me sat in this office space. I go out and I play airsoft once a month for the full day. I go to airsoft training once a month. Three times a year I help run events for the British Cichlid Association. I also attend tech events such as the monthly meetups for Chester Devs, which is my local tech group. And I attended my first hackathon last month, um, which was Hack24. And all of this on top of recording and editing the podcast and raising the family. And I did mention I was busy. Now, work-life balance is even more important when you're a remote worker. So if you don't have a hobby that isn't writing code, I would suggest find one. Just find something that will help take your mind off uh, writing code. Now, I also keep tropical fish, so... I'll go and spend time with uh, with my fish tanks and cleaning the tanks and doing water changes and stuff like that. It's just another thing to get your mind out of that sense of I'm working. Helps break down that uh, that barrier between your, your work and, and life balance. Problem solving gets harder as well when you're uh, sat on your own at home. And that's because there's not always someone to bounce your problems off. You could use Slack or Skype to call someone, but it's not. Not as easy as turning around in your chair and talking through the problem with the person sat next to you. One solution is to uh, use the rubber duck method. Now, I don't mean go and sit in a bubble bath and uh, and think it over, although that that might uh, that might help. But the uh, the rubber duck method is where you talk through the issue with a rubber duck or another piece of the office furniture, and uh, you do this out loud. And that can help you come to the the solution that you need. But really, it's no true substitution for a person. And because you aren't in the office with these people that you're working with five days a week, relationships are a lot harder to uh, to form. Establishing trust and developing that relationship with your co-workers takes a lot more effort than uh, when you are with them day to day. So when you, you are in the office, I'd suggest take the time to go for lunch with them. I'm not saying be the office socialite. Go over, chat to them, ask them about what they were doing at the weekend, what they did last night. Get involved. Don't shut yourself off and uh, and just go and sit in a corner. You know, make that extra effort. So I've quickly covered some of the good and the bad points about remote working. And, uh, and those were less travel and the relief from commuting, saving money 
technically a bit of a pay rise. Quiet when you need it. Freedom for where you can work and a wider pool of jobs to choose from. And the problems, knowing how much to do and not slacking off. The lack of human contact and the same four walls every day. And how problem solving gets harder. So I hope this gives you something to think about. Is remote working for you or is it not? It's not all coffee shops and sitting on beaches and sipping cocktails. It's just as challenging as being in the office, just without a strict dress code. So until next time, thanks for listening to The Cynical Developer. I'm James Studdart, and this has been Coding from a Beach. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on your favourite podcast platform and help The Cynical Developer to grow by increasing its audience. If you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website where you can find all the resource links and show notes for each episode. 